All right, hey, good morning, everybody. John here with FMP Wargamers, and this is the FMP Morning Show. It looks like everything is working. Oh, I'm seeing some weird numbers. Okay, uh, sorry. For some reason, the analytics still, or the uh, uh, frame rates still keep getting messed up when I'm on this channel, but hey, whatever. All right, well, welcome to the Monday Morning Show. We do the show Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, whether it's standard daylight or daylight saving, whatever. Uh, they are wherever you are in the world, Central Time here in the U.S., and we cover everything from Games Workshop News, which usually takes up the bulk of it since they are the big boys and girls on the block. Also, Marvel Christ Protocol, occasionally stuff from Fri Privateer Press, such as Warma Hordes or War Machine and Hordes, Malifaux a couple times, pretty much any gaming news we try to cover. And that is what we're actually going to be covering today, Warhammer, lots and lots of Warhammer. So if you missed out this weekend, we had a preview, so pretty much overall I would say good, uh, pretty much an uh, overall good preview. Uh, I think I had 13. 13, no, 13 or 14 out of 17 predictions uh, came around. I think it was 13 out of 17. I think I had four wrong. So awesome. So, you know, that as I talked about on the Saturday morning show, that was just for the preview. Uh, this now gave some essentially blue check marks or check marks for some of the sources that were like, hey, this is what's coming down the line. And, you know, and some X's. For some of those people that provided me information that just wasn't, well, wasn't legit. And then, of course, had to put a couple of those X's for myself because some of my predictions were definitely wrong. So I'm only going to very briefly go over the preview. Uh, down in the videos, uh, we should have, the video should still be there. The uh, what, what we went over on Saturday, the live reactions and everything to it. If you missed out on it and you want some commentary on it and be able to take a look at everything in real time so here we're let's go through this real quick because we've got a lot of stuff to cover today and i don't want to spend too much time on um, something i've already covered so first prediction came true house orlock got their first expansion box no idea if they're going to get a forge world um any forge world models like uh clan escher and um, goodness, why do I always forget that clan or uh, the not clan, but uh, yeah, clan and the Goliaths from Necromunda? They got some upgrades um, from Forge World. So right now, this is all we're getting. So um, we, I was thinking that these were Elysian drop troops because those jump packs that the, the four models have are very reminiscent of the Forge World version of the Elysian drop troops, but it's not. But people were chatting about it very heavily on the uh, during the live stream on Twitch, and there, I think it ended up being a little expensive to make an ex, uh, a full Elysian drop troop army from this box when you're only getting four, and you need probably a five to ten man squad. So I, I don't know if you can make an Elysian drop troops out of it. Somebody might, but Necromunda fans, dude, you're gonna be happy. People that love to convert and just make weird creations, you're going to be happy with this box. Uh, moving on, Horus Heresy. This was my first failed prediction, and that's all right. I don't mind too much. I, I was just really surprised that they are or that they had did a preview for something they've already previewed in a preview <laughs> back in April when they had parts one through three previews of what's coming up. They already covered. Lionel Johnson and the Crusade book for uh, basically the Road of Thromus. And we've seen the digital renders of, uh, how do they pronounce that? Conticar, 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 Terminators for the Night Lords, which I think actually looks absolutely awesome. And then some new uh, Jump Pack Terror Troops. And then, of course, the book. So it's a little like, really? What? I was thinking it was going to be Jakati Khan and. The next book for which would be probably the Siege of Terra, but I was wrong, and I'm allowed to be. That was totally on me. That was me. I think a lot of my 
inner fanboy was being channeled there. Um, and of course, the codex for Necromunda for the House of Iron, which will have all the rules past and present, and including Forge World for the House Orlock. So that's really cool. Everything together. I think they're around four, they're $40 books. Now they're big, double, chunky book size books. Has everything you need in there to play it. Uh, and there's the squad again. Uh, Orlock's Arms Masters and Wreckers. Basically, they're the guys that transport goods and they protect it. So I'm not going to stick around and look at all the different models, except a lot of people are chattering about these canids. People want these canids, both those puppies, good dogs. Um, then the other one we were right about, well, I was right about, but I also missed two others. Um, first, let's talk about the, what, how do you pronounce it? Hexmark Destroyer. This is a character model for the Destroyer cult. So we've already seen the Scorpex Destroyers and the Scorpex Destroyer Lord, or the Scorpex Lord. This guy, as you can see, he's got six weapons. Well, you can't see the six because it's tucked back behind, but he is a rootin' tootin', cowboy shooting Necron guy from the future. So probably not so much in the cowboy department. So, but <laughs> for the, especially for those of you that play uh, Wild West Exodus, please forgive me. He is not a Wild West guy. Unless you throw on a cowboy hat and some holsters, maybe you could wiggle that in there. Uh, plenty of memes going around about that, which is some of them are kind of funny. Anyway, so this guy is able to, sounds like, deep strike in. And he, he I'm sure he'll be good against, you know, uh, elite units or, you know, HQ choices, character models. But it looks more like he is designed to go in and wipe out squads. Um, low end, or basically your basic infantry, infantry, infantry basic troop squads i don't know why i can't speak today but they will be able to go in and looks like they're at the very least going to get six shots i wouldn't be surprised if they're they have some ability or there ends up being something in necron codex when it comes out in october that they get to fire twice which could be extremely devastating so we'll see how this works out um, i'm sure those are probably going to be strength five or strength six pistols and probably two damage a piece i would not be surprised they're pro this guy's probably going to be ideal for clearing out those five man primaris squads that people like to take so they don't give points away um, and they can kind of maximize their own points efficiency uh, for when they're building their army so he's probably going to be very ideal to have if you're a necron player and he's combining uh the destroyer the new destroyer cult and the death marks uh, if you're not familiar the death marks are the snipers of the necrons so really cool i think i was really happy about that what we did not see was i was predicting that we would see the last of the vehicles for the primaris marines it looks like it's a land speeder with missiles uh, missile pods or something on the back we know that there is a new captain coming and it looked like he had a combi bolt rifle grav gun or probably whatever the new grav gun will be called for primaris like gravaconosaur i don't know they, they they just tack on a whole bunch of vowels and consonants and it's like oh that sounds accurate uh, and what's significant about him is one of the fairly solid rumors going around right now probably about a 60 65 percent accuracy judging on the source is that the eradicators when they come out will have the option of the melta weapons or the option of the grav weapons in the box. When that box comes out, I have no idea when the box is going to come out and more than likely it looks like uh, all those rules will be in the not chapter approved. Let me let my brain settle. The codex in October alongside the Necron one. Sorry about that. Uh, so cool. Uh, they also put out uh, the mission packs for Beyond the Veil for the Crusade and, well, it's around here somewhere, Tactical Deployment, which is more for match play. Now, the difference between these two is if you are more of the narrative player, the Crusade book Beyond the Veil is going to be your, is going to be your jam. Uh, they 
you can read all the description here about all the different, um, uh, well, different description of how many different narrative forces and uh, how that all that's going to go on. There's also some new terrain, which I've been telling you guys, Warhammer 40,000 ninth edition is going to be very terrain focused and with tactical deployment, this is a new way to play with at least 18 missions. And the idea behind this is you are going to bring X amount of terrain. I'm going to bring X amount of terrain and it's going to be enough terrain for us to have our one game. But this way we can maintain balance by bringing our own terrain. So, you know, you won't be just coming over to my house with terrain that just simply benefits me or vice versa. We'll both have terrain that benefits each other and we'll go through the process of playing it or placing it and playing. Not a lot more, not a lot um, is is uh, kind of going on right now with that. We don't have a lot of information, but more will come. I do like how they're like, um, let's see here. It also makes it much easier for event organizers and clubs to run tournaments. No need to paint 500 ruins to populate the tables. You know, it's a good way for a games workshop to go, hey, you guys really want to buy this stuff. And normally you wouldn't, and we, we get it. But now you get to bring your own terrain to your tournament or your event and you can put it in there that's a great way for them to push those sales because like i said they want terrain in the game and well actually that's it that's that's it now please check with your local event organizers and everybody else if they're going to be allowing this most likely the larger gts and majors like clutch city gt and warzone houston um, for example here in houston both of them, um, they they already have their own terrain ready to go, so you probably don't even need to worry about that. But still, check with them before you do so. All right, moving on. Our other prediction, um, all three came true. I was predicting that we would get the. I keep saying we, so um, when I say we, I mean I. So the Knight Shadow Stalkers, which we saw earlier in the year we finally got to see the rest of all the models and i'm not going to go through them you can go through the website and ooh and ah just like i did um and also the scions of the of the flame so we were right we got to see both sets of models and we were i was right about the uh being a brand new core box set which is catacombs death and glory in the lands and dungeons of chaos all taking place at the eight points so no idea when this box is going to drop my guess november december that's my prediction just in time for the holidays possibly possibly uh what's cool about this box besides having these two massive war bands in here is a double-sided mat and all this extra terrain for fighting indoors um, and you know those jokes about the floor is lava literally the floor is lava look at that they're basically a horseshoe shape here of lava <laughs> so I, I don't know if there's going to be any in-game effects for that but I imagine so since there's bridges who knows how this is going to play out but it's still it's a cool thing so tons of new models and a new box set yay we're doing pretty good here uh, the next thing I had predicted was season four or season five. I, I always get it mixed up of Underworlds was going to kick off and Beast Grave is going to end. I thought Beast Grave would end with the Lizardmen because I don't think they've had their warband yet. Um, but we did get this little image right here of an upcoming Underworld warband. So we got that right. We just don't know if it'll be for Beast Grave. Um, and then the two new war bands, Lumineth Realm Lords and uh, Slanesh, moving that whole narrative forward for that because they are pushing that narrative kind of in the background with the return of Slanesh. Like he's starting to break his bonds um, in the Realm of Shadow, I think. And he's going to come come out and do all the horrible things that Slanesh does. Him, she, he, they, whatever... Uh, let's just say Slanesh. Um, and then uh, there's a new book coming out, Arena Mortis. This is for multiplayer games. And there'll be new maps and stuff to go along with that. And I'm sure, just like uh, they've done in the past, there'll be some white dwarfs that'll be coming out in the near future. 
that will have some bonus cards in it. So, you know, it's great sales pitch like, hey guys, if you like Underworlds or Warcry or this or that, we've got these free cards that will that you can only get in this white dwarf that you absolutely need. They're they're free in the magazine. So you need to pay your nine dollars to get the magazine. It really is great marketing because how else are you gonna get those free cards? So really cool. That's a prediction though. And then our last one, um, I was off the mark. I figured we would see something about Lumineth Realm Lords and or Sons of Behemoth. And I got and and of course a new box. I was wrong here um, on two of three. What I did not anticipate, well, I anticipated a new box was going to launch, and we got it. Shadow and Pain. This is going to be Daughters of Cain versus the Hidden Knights of Slanesh. Really awesome. I'm happy about that because uh, two of my favorite armies, next to the future Sons of Behemoth. What is uh, surprising is the two new characters that are only going to be available in this box to start with just remember i've said many times in the past if you just want the character and you don't care too much about the box set you don't need all those extra models you need to wait for about four to six months and then the, the these models will pop out usually within that six month period I, I haven't seen it go past six months but usually four to six months, you will see these pop up. They're probably going to be $35, maybe 40. GW has been increasing the prices, but I have a feeling probably about $35 for that, this Master of Pain. And then the um, Melusi, I'm, I hope I'm not, I'm probably in butchering that. Melusi Iron Scale. Um, is he, what is he called? Let me check out that name again. Lord of Pain. Okay, so I was right. Lord of Pain, not Master of Pain. Um, and then the Melusi Iron Scale. Those are the two new characters that will be in that box. So really cool. They're just keep moving us forward. There's also the book coming out, Broken Realms. Now, I don't know is it, if this is a novel or is this a narrative. I think this is um, a narrative campaign, the start of the Broken Realms. Um, so that's cool. That's cool that they, I really like how Age of Sigmar is moving stuff forward. So speaking about Age of Sigmar, we've got a couple things here. So first up, I was saying that late August going into September, Lumineth Realm Lords are going to drop. It looks like it'll definitely, not definitely, but it looks like it'll be September because we have one more week of, uh, this, this month of August has been releasing specialist game stuff. We have one more release weekend of pre-orders and releases this week i think we're getting the rest of well actually we're going to go into it uh next or coming to saturday uh the rest of oh what do you call it blackstone fortress the last expansion goes on pre-order this saturday and that will be released on the first weekend of september so september very likely is going to be lumineth realm lords almost exclusively we'll probably have two weeks release of it because there's a lot of product. Um, this article that they got today is just talking about the big bullheaded things, the Stoneheart King. I forget what it, the alternate uh, build for it is, but with them starting these articles, that's a damn good indication that I'm right. Lumineth Realm Lords are about to drop in uh, September, late August, early September. I've totally forgot about Blackstone Fortress. That's on me. I'll take that hit. I don't mind being wrong. I said late August, um, sometime in September. So we're right, largely. <laughs> uh, so that's good news. Now, uh, piggybacking on that, I also said September, October time frame is going to be around when uh, Sons of Behemoth are going to drop. Uh, one of my sources passed that on to me, and it was a reli uh, that it's a reliable source. What we now can at least confirm is that what's coming out in regards to Sons of Behemoth is an audio book or a book and audio book or audio drama that's going to drop in October. I think it actually officially releases on the 17th, so it goes on pre-order on the 10th or 11th, whatever that Saturday is before. So is that the release that they are talking about? Because sometimes that's how that works out. Uh, let me get to September or the 19th. I should say, I don't know. 
I honestly, I, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that Sons of Behemoth will drop in September, late September, early October. But October is a Necron and Space Marine uh, release. So is that going to be the entire month is going to be Space Marines and Necrons? And then maybe Lumineth, Realm Lords, and Sons of Behemoth? Hey, what's going on, Grandpa Strange? Uh, appreciate you just popping in. We'll see. Games Workshop usually has a schedule of uh, where they mix it, totally mix it up. But they could go, hey, Age of Sigmar, September. Warhammer 40,000, October. November is an eclectic month because we're going into holiday sales. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm going to keep my ear to the ground. But at least we got some traction on Age of Sigmar. Lumineth Realm Lords are right around the corner, which is going to make a lot of people happy. And Sons of Behemoth, there's... Something on the horizon that we can see, whether it's a it's actual the models or it's just um, black library material. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, speaking about uh, the preview uh, for this Saturday, Blackstone Fortress, the edge of the uh, what do they call this? Do they call it anything? Well, we're gonna find out here in a second. The edge of madness. I don't know. Um. I have no idea what it's called because I don't, I can't see the, uh, the edge of Ascension, maybe vaults, who knows, but there's a, <laughs> we got an audio drama. We've got at least two books coming out. And of course the final model set with two new, uh, style of models. Um, I wish I could see at the edge of the something. Why can't they just tell us what the gosh darn name is? Oh, well, um, and it looks like this is the final battle uh, for the Blackstone Fortress, or the, the story-wise, plot-wise. So if you've been do getting yourself involved in this game and you've been enjoying it, the, whether it's for the miniatures, the gameplay, the story, or all of it, the final um, expansion is here. That's going to go on pre-order. It looks like this Saturday, which is the... Oh, what is this Saturday? This Saturday is the 29th. So it looks like uh, 29th and it'll be released on the 5th. So good news. All right. Let me back up here. And as usual, I want to go ahead and just refresh the Warhammer community page just in case um, they've put some other news up there, which they tend to do without talking to me. Um, I don't know why we just can't get our story straight, why they don't alert me before they release any information. So it looks like it's called Ascension. Okay. So we're just going to uh, keep that up there and leave that alone. You might be seeing some frame rate uh, jiggling and stuff right there. I apologize. Got a weird spike. All right. So before we go any further, I want to talk about an upcoming grand tournament since the uh, a lot of the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, is kind of flattening out and in a great many places um, declining and um, a lot of norma normality, normalcy is starting to return to uh, shops and stores. Um, coming up November, well, let's just pull it up here. Coming up November 14th and 15th here in Houston, Texas, there's going to be the Clutch City GT. Now, we haven't had a Clutch City GT since 2016. Is that how long it's been? 15, 16, 14, 15, 16. I think so. Uh, since uh, Comic Palooza, I want to say 2016. Possibly 2017, but I think 2016. That is how far back uh, it's been since we've had a Clutch City. It used to be held at Comic Palooza, um, and then uh, it just got too expensive for us to be running it there, um, or not us, but for the organizers. Now, um, Colin McDade is going to be, uh, he's headlining this, and from what I understand as of right now, they have 15 unpaid tickets for the Clutch City GT, uh, which means uh, I think they have a 28 minimum or 28 maximum. That's the maximum amount of people that they can get in there meet any requirements for safety and health and all that jazz which is absolutely awesome 
Um, if you go to, you can see Clutch City GT. Well, uh, just put all that as one word. Uh, Clutch City GT. Just go, or not Google it, but or you can Google it or look it up in Facebook and get the link. You can also find it in BCP under uh, well. Just look for Clutch City GT for November 14th and 15th. On their Facebook page, they have the tournament details and the 40K packet. Uh, they see the tickets. Uh, ticket price is $70 and $25 for swag bag. Um, send via PayPal to clutchcityto at gmail.com. All that information is on the Facebook page, and I will get a link up on the FMP Wargamers page and the Havoc Maker Studio page. So if you're interested, you can get involved. They have 15 spots left as of about 15, 20 minutes. Well, about 20 minutes ago, they had 15 spots left. So if you're interested and you want to get some games in, uh, now just keep in mind that there's probably... You know, we can actually just click on here and do some event sharing and take a look. I'm sure they've got some health and safety um, standards going on here. Very likely. Um, well, you know what? It's going to mess up my computer. I'm not going to go through that. Um, just go take a look at it yourself. Uh, oh, it's, there it is. There's a note that says, We will be taking safety precautions as well as everyone's safety is paramount as we have a, fanta as we have a fantastic weekend of wargaming in the grim dark so lots of things are going to be happening in, on that weekend so please 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 go read the details and it, they've sold over half the tickets it looks like so don't miss out guys and gals because houston probably puts on some of the best i would say that here in texas puts on probably the best events in regards to tournaments um and gaming conventions I mean, no offense to the other Texas cities, but we're the best. <laughs> we always, I, I think it's a lot of that comes from, we have such a massive diverse crowd. That's very, um, that comes together and really supports all the stores we have. We're very blessed with so many stores here in Houston, gaming stores all over Houston, North, South, East, West, Central, it's a really, it's an amazing thing that we've got going on here. And I really, really do appreciate every single store that has supported Clutch City GT in the past and the future. And Warzone Houston, they, they support uh, MagCon, Alcon, all the other, um, uh, sorry, uh, Bayou Battles and a couple other uh, comic book and anime conventions. It's really awesome that we have... A city such size we have such a player a diverse player base that we're able to be able to do stuff like this on a regular basis and have to be very successful so enough about that just go check out clutch city gt i'm gonna stop rambling and i want to get on to as soon as i can find it here a couple things because i wanted to talk about and I, you guys, you guys know I don't talk too often about tournament rule or tournament lists and whatnot because I just don't. That's not my bag anymore. But I've seen some weird chitter chatter, some complaints and whatnot from people, and I just want to. I can't really address those complaints because I don't play often enough anymore. But at least I could talk about it. So right now, there is a bunch of I think two or three. Um, Adeptus Astartes or Space Marines Salamander list for ninth edition that are really doing well. And it's got a lot of people concerned. Let me first put a caveat. Don't be too concerned because right around the corner is the codex for the Space Marines. And it's very likely going to, I don't want to say nerf, but it is going to throw a lot of, I would say probably about 25% of this out the window which could make this list combat ineffective. I don't know for sure, but seeing things in the past, I would say that Codex will come out, GW will be eyeballing stuff like this and go, all right, so the Codex we can't do anything about, but two weeks after the Codex drops, we can go ahead and launch an FAQ to nip some of this stuff in the butt. But let's go over this real quick here. Um, 
So this is just one list. I think this was Mr. Salmon. I think I think it's David Salmon. Um, Salmon, Simon, whatever. From I apologize if I'm butchering your name. From the Flying Monkeys GT that was held about a week ago, I believe. So he took he has salamanders. He's running it as a successor chapter with long range marksman and master artisan long range marksman adds three inches to the range of all the weapons i believe and master artisans i believe i could be wrong but i believe master artisans um gets you one re-roll <laughs> same here um so uh, you can see the different stratagems that he popped, Master Artisans and um, uh, Trust of Prometheus. I'm not sure what those do. I don't have my book handy. Uh, so he's basically running um, a captain on bike, uh, basically a smash captain on bike. Uh, Thunder Hammer, Salamander's Mantle, Storm Shield. Pretty, pretty standard fare for a smash, well, a version of a smash captain. Uh, Primaris Lieutenant, not, uh, so it gave him some... Oh, that's the new one, the Indominus one. So, very beefy, close combat. Uh, very minimum on the troops. So, three scout squads. It looks like one is... Uh, lots of combi melters, of course. And I believe one of these, bolt gun, bolt gun, bolt gun, scout, one with a sniper. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's more of an erratic... I think it's a, it's a new kind of a combo... Um, I'm going to pull this up here. Part two of this, because this is like three pages here. Um, the elites. Okay, so yeah, it's, I think it's a new version of the aggressor bomb. So we've got Flamestore Gauntlet, Flamestore Gauntlet, or see, Flames. Oh, there's just, is that one squad? Nope, three squads. One squad of five or six, one squad of three, one, is that one squad of three again? Yeah. Um, two with Flamestorm gauntlets and then one with the bolt storm gauntlets then three squads of blade guard veterans uh my my guess is uh, and i didn't get to watch the battle report but this is probably stopping a lot of um the advancing across midfield because these blade guard veteran squads with that captain nearby and or that uh lieutenant those are right those are basically speed bumps it's going to be hard to get through I mean, that's uh, three, six, nine wounds, and I think around 15 to 16 attacks, well, at least on the charge, and you're eating through a two-up, four-up. Um, Mastercrafter power swords and everything. I mean, that's, those are, for being three-man squads, those are, hey, what's going on, Texas Wargamer, are very beefy units to try to take out. So, and the aggressors are, well, very aggressive. <laughs> I know, bad pun. Uh, Outriders, I don't know what he's, what he did with them but my guess is since it's two squads of three and you can't really do anything with them as of right now is they're probably a bit of a, a troll unit where they'll go around and take out very uh cheap weak troop squads and but more importantly that, i mean that's a secondary their primary mission is very likely to speed up grab an objective and then get out or something along that lines i can see these guys um uh, zipping around. Yes, you missed the chameleon coverage. Um, and then I think this is the new part of the list or, well, it has the new stuff in it. This is the last part of this list. Uh, the Return of the Devastators with the Grav Cannons. Um, and I'm going to get to the point of why I'm bringing all this up. Uh, then, of course, four heavy Grav Cannons, or Grav Cannons, not heavy Grav Cannons, but four Grav Cannons, and I believe they've got a drop pod. Yep, they got a drop pod. Now here's the other thing is, and this is why you're going to probably see a lot of these, the Eradicators with the Melta Rifles, the Melta Weapons got a boost. And with them being an assault weapon, they can be used in the, they get the bonus um, for the Tactical Doctrine in at least the second round and likely the third round. So bringing them in, they are just going to uh, pretty much melt somebody's face off. Uh, let's see. Virulent says it's a shame that this list exists at all because the Salamander Aggressor Bomb is going to radically impact aggressors if they ever get a point change. Well, unless GW just agrees to let Salamanders just be the best army for the seeable future, it also affects strat reserves as well. Yeah, you know, 9th edition, 
It's just going to be like 8th edition. There's going to be meta changes all over. And with this codex coming out very soon, uh, what we're about a month, about a month and a half away, month and a week, or yeah, I'd say about a month and a half away from the Space Marine Codex, I have a feeling the vast majority, or not vast majority, I, I'm, I'm still predicting about 25% of this list is going to go away. It's just going to get um, <laughs> eradicated. Uh, sorry, another bad dad joke. Um, I think that there's going to be some changes, but there's going to be something that roll in. Now, the reason why I'm saying be cautious, because I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, this list has won a whole bunch of tournaments in the US and um, and Australia, I believe they had a big GT there. Oh, I need to go out and rush out. I need grab cannons and I need eradicators. And I need this and this and this. You know, if you want to go out and buy all that. However, don't jump on. I My recommendation is don't jump on this bandwagon right now. Wait until that codex drops. Because when that codex drops, this could go right out the window. Or like I said, about 25% of it is going to get affected. And you're not, I mean, it, you're going to end up with a lot of people that that are chasing the dragon, so to speak. Sorry for the drug reference, but a lot of people that are chasing that dragon. Um, as soon as a list drops, people are like, oh my God, I got to rush out and buy all this stuff. And then, you know, a month or two later, it uh, gets FAQ'd or the next hot list comes out for a different army. And that pretty much negates this army. And then that one gets negated by another army. And it's just this horrible, that's why the meta has been so wonderful and horrible as it's constantly shifting so i'm just going to recommend that you be careful if you it's your money it's your army if you want to run out and do this go for it i would just advise caution we are a month and a half away and there could be something even juicier and better um, in that space marine codex or there could be something that's going to that's going to drop in that necron codex that's going to be like well, there's no point in me bringing this now. Why? I, now I got to do a completely different list. And then the next army will get their book. And you're like, well, now I've got to readjust this list because it's ineffective against that list. And it's just, oh, it's maddening. Um, the chasing, chasing that dragon. I understand that's your thing. It's uh, that, that especially competitive, well, we're all competitive players, um, tournament players. Of whether you're like doing the majors, GTs, local um, RTTs, regardless of what your your uh, tastes are, you know it, it's. I just just be cautious, guys. I understand that's your thing, and you really like doing it. And if you've got the money and the resources to do it, okay, fantastic. I would just advise. You'd be a little cautious, especially for those of you that are just getting into tournament play. Just because a list is doing well right now, has had three uh, very, and I would say almost say has not had the greatest amount of competition because these events are 30 to 50, maybe 60 man, and it's only one or two. We're just now getting into um, getting, getting our stride back. And this stride could just die off and then there could be no tournaments for like another three or four months so just be cautious right now that's all i'm saying uh vera lance says to be fair if you were playing space marines at all you did need eradicators i'm not a space marine hater but even i am unhappy at how powerful the eradicator is uh, every list i build has to answer two questions how how to play the objectives how to deal with the eradicators and the second question is always more important true I, I I honestly I think that there's going to be something coming that's going to make people pause. Um, so there's going to be a lot of people. We've we've seen this repeatedly, um, especially 2000 from in 2019 until all this kicked off. Is we've seen too many people rush out and buy up tons and tons of models, only to see those models become get, get put on the shelf because something new um, more efficient comes up um, what springs to mind right now aggressors in the beginning became nothing and then now they're back again where the 
nobody wanted to run Centurions, and then you couldn't find Centurions uh, pretty much the second half of 2019, and now there's Centurions everywhere on eBay and your locals, um, local buy, sell, trade uh, channel or uh, pages because they've become inefficient cost-wise. It's it's I don't know. Maybe on the outside looking in, I'm just like I think it's silly watching the ebb and flow all over the place that I think the people that I find to be the most successful is, are those that hold on to their army and perfect it. Um, great example. We had a player all the way up until the final Yanari nerf um, or Eldari nerf um, here in Houston. Um, Mike Delta, fantastic player, um, rode out every nerf every time he got nerfed he would adjust fire stick with that list but adjust fire in a minor way and compensate until that final what was it last year or this year or was it last year whenever that final yunari nerf came and it was just like it was the final nail in the coffin it wasn't even a nail it was like an asteroid uh shaped nail came down and eradicated it um then we have other players that do space marines over and over and over again, like myself, that we just adjust fire minorly, but I've got my core list. I'm always playing. I'll experiment here and there, but I'm not going to drastically change everything. And I'm not going to be go, well, I'm not doing well with my space marines. Let me start Tyranids. Let me start Necrons. Let me start this, 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 this. I just go with what interests me, but that's not the rubric that you should follow follow your heart if you want to do all that you want to jump around and that because that's your thing go for it. i'm just advising caution guys just advising some caution uh before i move on vero lance says um i'm in my first tournament online right now awesome i'm playing tau but my list looks nothing like tau it's just three tiger sharks uh three cold stars uh with some chaff to hold objectives in the back perfect I just kind of fly over and shove my armor down your throat. <laughs> Excuse me. And it also and it works because uh, no one is prepped to deal with that kind of thing. Can't beat Eradicators though. But when I built the list, I just kind of said I can't beat that unit no matter what. So I'm just going to ignore trying to build around it. And I think that's a very good that's a very good philosophy. I think you're kind of hitting something on the head there. Is when you're building a list, you should not be looking at to build a list to beat other lists, in my opinion. You should be building your list to maximize points on all the for the for the different scenarios. If you're trying to play in a tournament, you need to maximize your points. What are the easiest points to max to, to max out on? What are the most the medium and the most difficult? And build your list around that. Don't build your list on uh, and Virulence kind of hit it on the head here. Don't build your list to beat something like this. Don't that that's what are the chances that you will face off against that list? Maybe in a small 10 man tournament, you'll probably face off against it. 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 man tournament. What's the chances? Well, I guess it depends on how many are there, but you get my, hopefully you get my point. Don't center around what you're going to be facing or possibly facing center around uh, accomplishing the mission. The mission is what you're trying to score points on. That's how you should be building your list. If you want to be a little bit more efficient, if you're like me, I want to bring what looks cool, what I'm having fun with, what I'm going to have fun with. And if I win, great. If not, I still got to go play some games, got to hang out with my friends and do some crazy, crazy stuff. So there's different ways to play the game. I'm just advising you guys, be cautious before you rush out to buy the new hot thing. All right, so enough about Warhammer 40,000. I don't have any privateer press, Malifaux, but I do have a little bit of knowledge or uh, information concerning, as soon as I can find the button here, uh, ah, there we go. For Marvel Christ Protocol, um, those of you who have not played Marvel Christ Protocol, you've heard me talk. You might have heard me talk about it before. It is probably the best uh, skirmish game out there. Well balanced, like extremely well balanced, and ideal for tournament play. Ideal for tournament play. 
ideal. Um, and I think by the end of the year, there's going to be 39,000 possible combinations. I think we're about the halfway mark. So, I mean, at minimum, 39,000 some odd combinations. Uh, so what is coming up very soon is the Ghost Rider. Uh, this is the original Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze. Um, so I'm going to read the stats off. Nothing changed as on his day's side or his healthy side. Nothing changes. So we're just going to concentrate on the healthy side and why this character is going to be really good. Um, so he's got seven wounds going left or right at the top. Seven wounds, um, which means he has 14 because his injured side has seven as well. He's got medium movement. That's really good. Um, he's a size three character. He's a very large character because he's got his motorcycle. He's very costly. He's five points. Um, I believe Hulk is six points to give you an idea how powerful he's going to be uh, or threat level points. You know what I mean? Um, his resistances are really good. He's got a three against physical, four against energy and mystic. That's that's awesome. I mean, he, he's, he's tanky. Um, I'm going to blow the size up a little bit more. Um, let's look at his base attacks. So this is where this guy is going to be, I think, really ideal. Because all of his attacks look to have some other trigger. Where not every character has these secondary triggers that actually can spawn up other ones. So first one is uh, Chains of Damnation. Range 3, you get 6 dice, which is... <laughs> A lot. Um, it doesn't cost any power. Uh, as usual, these basic attack, that first basic attack won't cost any energy. And if you, for every point of damage you dealt, you'll get energy back, which is good. You need that energy. Also, if you roll any wild dice, which do count as uh, successes, after this attack is resolved, the target character gains the hex special condition. I've got to look up hex. I forget what it does. Um, but I believe it negates one of your successes. Uh, Flames of Hells is next attack. It's a beam attack. So basically you're going to draw, you have a range three ruler and you're going to draw it out from wherever you want to shoot from him. And everything along that line is going to get hit. Um, five dice cost two power, so it's a little costly. Um, if you manage to cause damage to the kit to the target or targets um they get uh this incinerate special condition that's a new one i have not seen yet either but i imagine you're going to take damage every turn kind of like bleed you're going to take uh, bleed damage you're going to lose one point um every turn pennant stare is a mystical attack range three five dice five power this is very costly but there's probably a good reason why you get uh, add dice to the attack roll equal to the amount of power that the target character has to a maximum of five. So you're going to spend five and every amount of power that you have over that five, it, you're going to be able to add more, those that many dice up to five. So you be, you could conceivably do 10 dice of damage. Um, Hell on wheels is a superpower cost three advance this character long um, long range, which I think is about 11 to 12 inches. This super power can only be used once per turn. So he can move medium. This doesn't cost an action, by the way, because it doesn't say action. So he can spend an action to move medium. Spend three power to then move long distance. He could be in the backfield or on an objective right away. And this game is very objective heavy. His reactionary power that he has is Wicked's Judgment. After an attack made by a character within range 3, this character is resolved. If that attack targeted another allied character, this character may use a superpower. The attacking character suffers 1 damage for each... Um, oh, it's critical hit. So if you attack one of my characters when range 3, and you for every critical hit you get against my character... Um, I can use this power and you're going to take, you are going to take that much damage as well, which really could get worse, especially there's a lot of abilities out there or a lot of cards and stuff that allows you to, um, re-roll to try to get those critical successes. So <laughs> it's like, do you want to hit me? Okay. Well, you only kind of hit me. Do you want to re-roll those to try to get better hits? <laughs> 
<laughs> so that could be very bad. You could end up dropping one of my characters, but you end up in turn get dropped from Wicked's Judgment. Uh, Spirit of Vengeance is his innate power. After an attack made by an enemy character that is within range 3, this character is resolved. If the attack targeted another allied character, this character gains power. So, not only are you getting hit for hitting my friends, but I'm getting power from hitting you. That's not too bad. Um, as I said before, everything about him is the same on the flip side. So he is um, a, for five points, you're getting a very, very tough, tanky character. And he's got lots of reactionary abilities. He's going to be really good to run around. Um, this, no, this right here, this isn't Malifo. This is Marvel Crisis Protocol. I have played Malifo. I do like Malifo. This is Marvel Crisis Protocol, though. So if you ever wanted to play Marvel characters, um, the rules are free on Atomic Mass Games website. So if you want to try out the rules without buying into it just yet, you are f you can totally do that. I'm going to put it up here so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, maybe if I can do this. Uh, let's go to Atomic... Oh, look at that. Atomic Mass Games. Uh, you'll have to play tinker around with their webpage to get to the rules, but they have... The free rule book that's always updated with the FAQ and errata. Free, guys. You can test the rules out. You can test the rules out. It's that easy. <laughs> so, uh, what Ver Verilance says, Malifo, I used to play that game. No one else plays it in my area, and I haven't played since the first rule set. It's neat to hear someone even mention that game. Oh, okay. Real set one was kind of imbalanced, but I still enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed the miniatures more than the game, but we have a very large uh, community. I think there's about 20 people uh, that I've seen playing on um, I think about 15 on average, but I know there's about 20 people that play. And um, Doug Bowman, um, I think he's the local press. I'm going to say press ganger. I know that's not what it's called, but whatever the local rep is, that's um, he's actually run of um, beta events. Um, at Las Vegas Open for them. I know he's heavily involved with that game. He is um, knee-deep in it. He really loves it. I love the models, but I'm more of uh, Warhammer 40,000 and Marvel Crisis Protocol right now. All right, guys and gals. Uh, thank you. I know it's a little bit longer. There was just a wealth of content. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, well, it's going to be hard for those of you that are... Uh, here right now to uh, let me know what you think uh, since once I turn this off but those of you that are on uh, will be watching this later on YouTube drop down in the comment section give me a thumbs up thumbs down let me know what you think about the analysis of the salamanders and uh, my kind of my thoughts on tournament play you know is this list going to kind of go the way of the dodo once the codex drops um, what about, you know, should people rush out and buy this list now, the Salamanders list or a version of the Salamanders list? Should they buy it now or should they wait and see what happens? You know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm trying, I'm going to be focusing a little bit more in the very near future as we get back in the tournament scene on more analysis of the meta. And this also applies to Age of Sigmar. So those of you that are Age of Sigmar players, I'm going to be since i'm going to be diving into the game finally i'm going to be looking at the meta and how it plays now i know that the two different game systems have a different player base um mentally and of course um the physical selves but mentally i know that they play largely different i would say at the very minimum a 50 percent difference in attitude um uh, you basically flip flop them so I don't know how that will pan out when I start doing the analysis, but I'm going to do my best to give an analysis of both game systems. And as other tournaments start evolving, like I know N4 uh, rule set for Infinity is out. As those, as soon as those tournaments start dropping, I'm going to start picking the brain, the local war cores, and start attending the events and just record it and get their impressions and whatnot. So a lot more coming down the line for FMP Wargamers. 
and those of you that follow me on Havoc Maker Studio. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and get that up there. A little self promotion. Bam! Uh, this is my paint hobby and chat channel um, that I do in the evenings. Um, it I'm still part of FMP Wargamers. This is just my own personal studio. If you want to head over, uh, I do painting. I'll do painting advice, tips, tutorials. We got a lot more stuff coming down the line for reaction videos to not only games and product, but also video games, television series, and movies, and more. All right, I'm gonna get going. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please, please, please stay safe. Wear your mask. Hand sanitizer, wash your hands, social distance. You know what's going on, whether you like it or not. Please just look out for everybody else. And I will see you guys tonight at 7.30 p.m. on Havoc Maker Studio. We're going to be painting something tonight. I don't know what. I've got, I do have a commission that I am picking up today. So it'll probably be a commission. Um, but if you guys have any questions or if you want to, me to show you any, um, if you got any, uh, you want to, like a quick tutorial on how to paint or convert or something, let me know and we'll go from there. Anyways, you all have yourself a wonderful day and I will see you later on tonight. If I don't see you tonight, I'll see you Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. We'll have some more news coverage. All right. See you later.